Hello, it's Crypto CJ. It's the trade of the day, the Friday afternoon Zoom edition. And Bitcoin and Ethereum have been pokey, the capital PO. I mean, these guys aren't going anywhere. The, the range is like 5%. So let's go to the chart and check it out. Okay, I'm on the Bitcoin, I think, eight hour chart. You guys seen that? Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep. All right. Thank you. I've drawn the I've drawn this rectangle here, which is between twenty nine five and thirty one five, and that's where we've been, you know, since um since late June. So last I don't know three weeks or so, been stuck in this range. When this happens, when it goes sideways like this, as you guys may have heard on the Crypt Nation call yesterday, they were talking about this. It, it usually explodes one way or the other. Now that's not incredibly helpful to us unless we know the direction necessarily, but I'm just a, a big move is imminent is the point. So we don't have it yet. Um, let's look at Ethereum. It's a similar situation. Four hour chart, and I I, I updated my uh, my ranges here, and we're we're stuck here around 1850 on the bottom, and right around 2000 on the top. So that is so much is that. Yeah, it's about six, six and a half percent. Not doing much. There's been, I mean, not really any terrible financial news that, that I can recall. Um, you guys have anything to add or anything to talk about regarding Bitcoin, Ethereum, the market overall? No. Just anyway, getting, um, getting hard waiting. Yeah, indeed. Any wild speculations anyone care to uh, to contribute? Um, yeah, it's probably not very well, responsible. The um, have a look at the um, three moving averages because that was quite enlightening that um, Crypt Nation talked about. I'm trying to think if I have those. Have you handy. got those? And I think it was on the day chart. <sighs> Um, because we're definitely in a strong consolidation phase, yeah. I remember now they were, but were those um, those are EMAs, right? Uh, triple I'm EMA, sure. there's oh, yeah. a triple EMA, which is the quickest way to put it up, yeah. Triple super trend. I thought they had that one, I don't go down. That's right, I'm looking right at it. Yeah, I saw it. Star that one. Uh, it? It's, huh? It's expecting multiple inputs. Well, I don't want to waste time dealing with this. Um, I thought the, there um, was a default one. Try just DMA, um, SMA, triple SMA, triple SMA. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and back right. up way down there. There you well. go. I found this this one here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, fifty one hundred. I think were they twenty fifty and two hundred or what were what their their lengths? Yeah. Twenty yeah, fifty uh, one hundred usually. Two hundred. I mean. No. Yeah. 2050, 200? Yeah. It's near enough. Near, near enough. Near, near good enough it's, for our purposes? Yeah. All right. Let's make this a little brighter. Sorry, guys, for taking time to do this. On the plus side, if you were curious on how to do it, you can you can learn with me. I haven't set this one up exactly before. But like the guy said, it's a triple at, um, SMA, simple moving average. Uh, 20 day, 50 day, and 200 day. And Bitcoin is above all of them except it's like the, that's the 20, I assume. Yeah. The red one's 20. So, so the, the really interesting information yeah. here is that, that they're all moving up. Yeah. They're all trending up. Like Craig said, this one's hook, the 20's cooking a little bit. 
But uh, you know, yeah, but that's just a that bounces around. But yeah, yeah, you know the longer term ones, you know, uh, being moving up for quite a while. Yeah. So although that. we're going sideways, the the trend is starting to move up. Yeah. That's confusing. Get rid of that. All right. So we've been moving up for all of them here since about right up here. This this is the 200. And it's been trending up since late March. And then the rest of them, we did have a dip here on the 50 and the 20 briefly, but that's been trending up since late June. So in the big picture, the trend seems to be up, but there will be lots of adjustments. As a day trader, I, I love to see this. So <laughs> that's what I like to trade. Uh, for swing traders, you know, like, they like the bigger moves. But, you know, we, we look for both. Emphasis on, on day trading for me, but I like short swing trades too. So thanks for, uh, for making that suggestion. I think I'm going to put this on my five minute and save it. So I can recall it. All right. Any questions or issues on the overall market before we move on to altcoin alert to find some day trades? What can we find for later on today and tomorrow? Okay, altcoin alert. I've got the radar button, so I get all the information. I'm going to reload to refresh. It's a good habit to get into each time you, you look at this to refresh it. I'm going to sort by AA score. It's my favorite, my primary sort. And we've got new mare and XLM above the 80. That's what I'm looking for, 80 and above. What they're telling us at Allcoin Alert is stellar. That's an 81% chance to go up 3% or more in the next 48 to 72 hours. It's a little iffy on the weekends. Usually you have lower volume, but uh, generally speaking, that's that's what we look for. Um, I trade on leverage, so I'm usually looking for a 1% move at 10x leverage. If you're trading spot, like a lot of you are, especially some of you new folks, you're going to want to get that 2 to 3% move and, and pile those up. You can really grow your balance that way. And I'm going to show you how I've grown my balance in the last about three weeks uh, in a moment. Um, but for now, let's bring up the chart on XLM. It's not the right one. I usually have one with the right settings. Sorry, guys. The uh, other layout we were looking at is something else I want to talk about, but not, not quite yet. All right, five minute chart on Bitcoin is my go-to. We're gonna to go to XLM, take a quick look at the five minute, see if anything's happening now. You can find a one, two, three dip. That would be pretty cool. I don't need the moving averages now. Go away. Thank you. So you move, you've you moved away from using MACD? Yeah, I trashed that and explain, uh, replaced it with the momentum. So I'm not anti-MACD. I just want to try something else for confirmation. And that's just on my trend trading. I don't use either of them for my, well, I use the RSI to actually put alerts on for my, my dip trading. Um, but I only use the RSI and squeeze momentum for confirmation on that super trend. We'll talk about that shortly. All right, so I'm on the five minute on XLM and we're maybe could be kind of, sort of, a dip sequence. We got a little bit of a squeeze and a little bit of a bubble. Um, I'd rather see something like this, you know, like we had in the wee hours of the morning. Uh, it's not a perfect structure for the one, two, three dip. There's a little bit of a squeeze and it bubbles out eventually. And there's about five or six dips here. So I need to turn off some alerts. We've got too many going on right now. I'll do that a little later. So I don't really see a trade I like at the moment on XLM. Do you see some support in the short term? Year around 1550. 
1540. So you could put a price alert here and try to catch that. If it dips down, you right click here, add an alert. And I usually use my information sources for alert names and notification. This is what I usually have for my manual alerts. It'll pop up on my app on my phone. It'll show a pop up on my desktop computer and play a sound on my desktop computer. I don't click the send email. I get enough emails. So, and then I usually assign a sound to each, each strategy. So with this one, I'd probably go with a three notes reverb and click create and you're good to go. But as you know, I prefer 15 minute charts and indicator alerts. So I will go over this setup briefly, and then I'm going to show you a new setup that I've been testing for the last few weeks. It looks really promising. OK, on Stellar at the moment, um, let's look at Divergence. It's one of my favorite indicators, Divergence. Like it sounds, it's, uh, it's when the price action and the indicators disagree and does have some predictive value. Look at some of the bullish divergences on XLM. You get this here and then a nice move up. Get in here. You know, 6% move. You know, this is good stuff. All these have done really well on the long side. You know, 3% there. This one took a little while. Um, I would have had probably two ladder buys in on this and then got out right about here. You know, for an overall profit, my first position would have lost a little bit, but my second two would have been would have been in profit. And then these, this one looks pretty good. Would have gotten me out. This one, we don't know yet. It just went off, you know, about an hour ago. So divergence on the long side looks good. On the short side looks good as well. Just kind of eyeballing it. You know, this one went against us at first and dropped down nicely. So, you know, you can only trade on the on the on the short side, you know, when, when things go down in price on a leverage exchange. And um, you know, that's what I like to do. So I can trade both directions. If you're trading spot, you're just gonna be looking for bullish divergence. And alerts are really easy on this indicator. Right click, add an alert. If you're trading both directions, you'll have to do one for both negative and for positive. If you're on spot, you'll select this uh, positive, click once per bar close, and a, a score purchase, set up the way I like. I'll go with the handbell and click create, and you're good to go. I already have this alert set, so I'm not going to set it. I, I did this one this morning, so I don't need it to, to go right now. But CJ? In yes. these settings, can you choose to just have shorts and or longs showing? Or particularly longs, can you turn off the shorts? I think so. People that are just spot trading. That's so they question. don't even see those. Um, yeah. Yeah, you'd probably turn this off. And no, that's just um the direction. Inputs. That never occurred to me. Yeah, I think you could maybe like turn this into a color that you couldn't see. Well, actually you can see it, so. I don't know, Craig, it's a good question. I could mess around with it and, and try to figure it out, but I don't see it at the moment. No, it's not obvious, is it? No, so. But beware, this uh, this indicator, divergence for multiple indicators, does repaint. This is the one I use, which means it gets new information. It might creep over. Like maybe this one originally went off here, here, and then it crept up a little bit, and then it went off again. And then it that's called repainting. When, when something, when an indicator gets new information and moves. So... It's a little frustrating for back testing, but I, I think the ease of which this indicator works is worth that that small risk. So, um, and then I've got this multiple divergences non-repaint as a backup in case I need to look at it. 
unfortunately it's not indicator friendly like uh, like this one is. So that's my divergence approach. What I usually do is I look at this one. If I don't see what I like on the divergence side, if I see a lot of, you know, say two or more trades that would have lost. And for me, a loss is usually going against me between say six and 10%, give or take, depending on what strategy I'm using and what my settings are, then, then I move to my second approach, which is super trend. So this is sort of the opposite of divergence. It's going with the trend and, but it doesn't, it doesn't go off as frequently as, as divergence does. So um, on XLM, these look pretty good. Got the short one here. Um, yeah, I would have, I would have been out that picked up my 1%. If you were hanging on longer, maybe you trade smaller leverage, look for a bigger move. Maybe you trade say two or three X or five X try to get 2%. You know, that's a good strategy too. Actually, if you're starting a leverage, that's probably the way to go. You may not want to want to go with uh, 10 X yet. This buy one didn't, doesn't look that good. Actually, that pump would have gotten me out, but if you're holding on for, say, 3% or, or trying to get to this, this uh, resistance here, you'd still be in that trade. Well, the sell obviously did well, and this buy looks like it did okay, too. So super trend looks pretty good, and it's really easy to set alerts. If you're doing spot, you're going to want to stick, stick with the buy. If you want to do a weekend short, like I frequently do, go with the sell. And most of the time during the week, I'm going with a direction change. So I'm trading both directions. So once per bar close, AA score, and you're good to go. I don't do alerts both directions. I don't do both super trend and divergence. I usually choose one or the other, but you could try it. And then the one I want to focus on now is the RSI on the 15 minute. Um, what I like to do is when the value drops below 30, this is the 30 here, this is this white line, and crosses back up, that's usually a good indication to get in on a, on a buy. That's um, something that's dipping and then coming back. So in that scenario, I would have gotten in, and this, this doesn't perfectly replicate the one, two, three dip on the five minute chart, but it comes pretty close. It's close enough for my purposes. You know, I actually, I think I made this trade this, no, it's too early. I wasn't up that early, but had I been up at 6 a.m., I would have set that up and, you know, there's a nice almost 4% move. So that's a really good entry right there. And on the short side, we, we look for a pump above the 70 and then a, then a dip back below. I don't know if that would have triggered. That definitely would have right about there. And so you get a really nice move down, you know almost seven, over 7%. So these look really good. I've already got this alert set up. If you want to trade both directions, I'll just go ahead and pretend to edit this and show it to you. I'm going to use the entering channel function. That's this one down here. I'm going to set up a 70 at the top, 30 on the bottom, once per bar close. So whenever it goes above the 70 and then comes back down, that's entering the channel, I'll get alert. Whenever it drops below the 30 and comes back up, that'll also give me an alert. And then I use a different alert for this. I use the chirpy one, you know, whichever one you like, but I like to differentiate them. So if I'm away from my computer and I hear it, I have an idea of where to go right away. It doesn't help me on my phone though. I just have one, one sound on my phone, so. CJ. And... Yes. When you when you're doing the entering channel, and you know sometimes it'll kind of bounce along the thirty or the seventy. Yep. Um, what do you use to confirm when it's time to enter? Um, this is sort of a contrarian approach, like divergence. So I don't really have a um, a specific indicator I'm using for confirmation. Maybe I should, but. Uh, I just rely on, on the, I, I look at the candle action too, but you know, usually when it's down and coming back up, that's starting to, to do that or is in the process of doing that already. So don't really have a specific um, indicator. Though I'm going to show you something new 
that allegedly incorporates other indicators. We'll talk about that momentarily. What I want to do now is show you, you know, some of the success I've had with this RSI strategy. Uh, it's been my best strategy this summer. Um, and I've got my, I have my carbon over here. This is a software I use to initiate trades. I apologize. I thought I'd pull this over, but I have not. Okay, are you seeing my uh, my carbon one two three DP? Yep. Okay. All right, good. Yes. Yes, so yes. I started this, and I'm I'm just showing you this for the purposes of of showing you my trades. I started this account on Bybit on June 29th. Um, as of this morning, I was up 14.7%, and I've had a couple trades complete. So I've made a little over $60 on a $400 account. And these are all manual trades using the very thing I just showed you, the RSI. And I'm going to show you my individual, a list of individual trades. I did recycle this account, so I've got a... I was doing, using a different strategy on it before that didn't do as well. So let's see where I started right about here. Yeah. So come on, go up. There we go. So it's this many trades. As you can see, I've got, I'm just piling up 10% wins for the most part. Sometimes when it goes against me, there's several ladder buys. And in that situation, I, I take a smaller profit just to get out. So you'll see some of these single digit wins as well. I do have one loss. I do have a stop loss on this. Usually kicks in around five and a half, six percent on a chart. Uh, but the point is, I can automate my my ladder buying and my entry into Bybit, which is a foreign exchange. Um, once you do the, you know, do the gyrations to get into a foreign exchange, um, you can use something like like this. You know, carbon I'm testing or um, you know, there's another one called three commas, I think is kind of difficult to use, but this isn't available yet. Um, we're hoping this fall, this will be available, but I'm, I'm with the, the beta testing team and I, I'm not pitching this at the moment. I'm just uh, showing you the results because I don't keep a spreadsheet anymore like I used to. I just go ahead and, and look at these results and then keep notes. And uh, as, you, as you can see, these are, these are all based on that, that, uh, that RSI strategy. So any questions on this? Okay. Congratula congratulations. Thank you. Not really looking to brag or anything. I just wanted to, no. to share with you guys that the strategy was doing pretty well. I will, in the interest of uh, full disclosure, what I have shown you with the super trend and the divergence, I'm down a little bit. Um, I started that a week before this one. I think um, mid to late June, and uh, I'm I had a four hundred dollar account, and I'm down. I'm 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 at about three ninety now. So that one's not working as well. Um, I think it works well enough to to keep at it. You know, I have I've had used some version of it past year year and a half. So not not bailing on it yet. But um, anyway, we're uh, we keep plugging on that one. And then finally. I want to show you a new strategy which resembles the RSI. And that's this one here. This is the Red K Everex. I saw a, a YouTube video about this. I, I don't watch those as much as I used to. I used to try every strategy that looked good. And um, but I saw when I saw this chart, it looked a lot to me like the RSI. And what I like about it is you can use it on the five minute chart and um, and it's pretty simple. Um, you can use the same, as far as an alert, we're looking for it to go below the, the, the negative 50 value and come back up. That's my entry on a long. Hang on CJ, we're not seeing your screen. Oh, my bad, thanks. Uh... Hate it when I do that. All right, how about now? Yes. Okay, so this is the Red K Everex. 
I don't know if that's the name of the strategy, the recreate the creator or both. Not sure which one I have. Looks like Red K does a lot of these. Shoot. I may have to get back to you with which one I, I have here because there's a bunch of Red K stuff. It wasn't easy to find as I thought. I found it pretty easy when I first loaded it. I have to get back to you on that. Okay, so how it works is when the... And this, this line here, this color, either it's colored usually blue or orange. And this one is called the signal line. You can set an alert using the signal line or this gray line, which is the smooth line. I, I, I've tried both. Today, I'm, I'm trying the smooth line. Yesterday, I was using the other one. It's not a significant difference, but it is slightly different. So if you're interested in trying this, you might want to might want to use test both of those um, approaches. So again, dip below 50 and come back up. On the short side, we want to pump above 50 and then a drop. So you can see my my rectangle here and and then this will this this alert will go off and it drops below 50 or pumps above the negative 50, which, similar to the 30 and 70 values on the RSI, but anyway. And on the strategy I saw, it was incorporating these these volume and momentum uh, indicators as well. I, I have not. I just like, I'm just trading off this. I'm being a little bit, um, I'm just kind of streamlining it, making it as easy as possible for now. And then my alert, start from the beginning. And I'm going to choose here, entering channel. Um, it it, uh, it defaults to this bulls thing, which isn't very useful. So you're going to want to choose either signal line or the um, ROF smooth. So let's say we'll use signal line for this time. Entering the channel, this is going to be 50. It's going to be negative 50 once per bar close, and then a score purchase. Yeah, my notifications. I think I was using the yeah handbell. I'm using a different a different notification sound. And I'm going to show you. I've been doing this on a practice account, which is available on Carbon. And that's here. And I started with a you know fictitious amount of a thousand dollars. I've um, my balance now is twelve oh eight, so it's over twenty percent. I started this on the tenth. So 11 days ago, and I haven't traded this every day. I was trying to automate it and messed it up. And anyway, I have to revisit that, but I'll show you the trades real quick. Um, on the five minute chart with say three, say you go to altcoin alert and choose three coins you wanna, you wanna follow. Um, I'm getting a lot of trades with this. So I got 40 trades and I mean, that's 11 days, but I've tried probably Actually, I can even look at this. Uh, I traded today, I traded yesterday, and then I didn't trade for a few days. I the 17th, the 13th, and these are from last week. So on the 11 days, I probably traded about six or seven of them of 20%. So this is a, a practice account, doesn't mimic the, the uh, exchange perfectly, but for my purposes, for an initial test, I like what I see. So um, this might be one you guys might want to try if you're kind of in a rut on what you're doing or don't like what I'm doing or want to mix it up a little bit. You might want to go ahead and try this uh, this red K. I think it's interesting for, again, just getting that 1% on, on leverage. Or if you choose something that's really volatile, what do I have going today? I've got Didix, which is one of my favorites to trade because it's, it's really volatile. Link has been popping lately. Uh, Doge. Had a pretty good move. And this alert just went off on Doge. Let's go ahead and look at it. All right, so this one, I must have it on the RROS, this gray line. So it went above the 50 and then dipped below. 
So we're anticipating this to dip a little bit. If I get in now, you know, a 1% move for me and a 10% profit at 10x leverage, I don't need to go very far. So I can, I might have a trade like this already going on. Let's go to trade or dashboard actually. And see what I have going. Uh, I've got one long, two shorts. I usually like to keep two going each direction at the most. So we'll go ahead and short Doge. Oh, it's already sh already shown there. Click that, and that's a, a short on Doge on my practice account. We'll see how that that one pans out. All right, so any questions on the red K? Actually, lots of questions, but I think I'll have to look at the info and figure out what's going on. Yeah, it's, I mean, it looks different. The time frame's different, but uh, again, it's very similar to the RSI, which is why it caught my attention. But it seems it worked really well on the five minute. It bears some similarity to the stochastic as well, or stochastic RSI, and those are, those are indicators we've looked at in the past. So <clears throat> if you right now, at the, all right, go if ahead. You looked at the, if you looked at the stochastic area side next to this and seen the differences? I have not. Let's see. Um, at least the, I didn't change any settings on this. Let me look at the settings real quick. Rate of flow, look back, ever expands. Yeah, this seems to be custom. And it's smoother, not as choppy as the stochastic. So, yeah, not, not exactly the same, sort of, kind of, sort of similar. Yeah, the entries and exits, or the entries in particular, are very similar. Yeah. Like this one been, triggered on the, one. but this one would not have, but that would have been, that's a trade I missed. Yeah, I'll have to look at this uh, maybe a little later and match it up. Yeah. Okay. Good point, though. Any other questions? Okay, um, I've gone a little longer than I thought. I'm going to speed through about two more analyses, including our short of the weekend. And, um, but yeah, take this uh, red K and, and mess with it if you want. All right, let's go back to altcoin alert. Going to refresh. We did an AA score. Let's look at the long term sentiment, which is another sort I like. And long-term sentiment is a comparison of Twitter data for different time frames. I like to match that up with the Elder Impulse Daily, which is a technical indicator. When I see matches like this, and, and I was I have alerts on Maker at the moment, then that's something I want to look at. So let's check out Maker because we're bullish on both of these. And that's something I trade from time to time. Okay, look at the five minute real quick. Um, this is interesting. A big dip here, sort of a one of my one of my least favorite crypto terms or trading terms, a dead cat bounce. Not quite, but one prolonged dip and then a bounce. It wouldn't surprise me if we dipped again and entered into a, a two or three dip sequence. So you might want to set a price alert down here around 1090 and try to catch that if you don't want to deal with the indicators. Otherwise, let's look at the 15 minute. And got our divergence. Yeah, here, here's what I'm talking about. These divergences look pretty good on the surface. I don't know if I would have gotten out of this one or not. But this one looks problematic. 
Yeah, and then it goes. See, that's 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 a loss for me. But the rest of them, this one we don't. This one from this morning we don't know yet. The other two look okay. I probably would have gotten out here with my one percent approach. But if you're trading spot, you know you're probably still in that trade. Um, and this one we don't know yet. So I got one really bad loss on my short-term back testing. So in that situation, I'll take a look at super trend, see if that would have done better. But we have a similar loss here, I think. Yeah, same problem as. So in that situation, you can avoid the sell and just take the buy on the super trend. Or you could just take bullish divergence on divergence. Or you don't take any of them because you have that one bad loss right before the big pump. Um, I don't recall why this pump, the, the, the guys at Crypt Nation were talking about this. Um, maybe that was last week because this pump happened after that call. So, All right, well, let's look at RSI. We've got a short position here. Let me get my vertical line. So we got a pump above the 70 and then a dip here. And we get a nice move down. I think that would have been profitable. We get this pump above 70 and then a dip right about here. And that looks good. If it doesn't make it, then it eventually does here. And then we've got this dip below. And then a little comeback here. So this is a trade I probably would have taken, uh, even though it's not a perfect uh, one, two, three dip on the five minute chart. It does look pretty good on the 15 and that's usually good enough for my purposes. So I probably would have taken that one. We don't know yet how that one's gonna work out. Okay, any questions on Maker? All right. Um, Let's go for our short of the week or of the weekend. And we can sort this, look for bullish, and we can sort it to look for bearish. So uh, I've got um, this match on Rocket Pool. I don't know if that's something I can trade on leverage or not. When you trade leverage enough, you remember what you, you know, what's available for that purpose and what is not. Lena, that's one shoots pops up a lot. I wish this was on leverage somewhere. STX, I like this one. That can be pretty volatile. Let's look at STX. Okay, five minute. Wow, Chop City. This is good day trading stuff here. Love it. Let's go to, um, okay, so if you're looking for a short, we're going to do the opposite of what we were doing on the uh, on a five-minute chart. We're looking for one, two, three pump, something like this. See, so you squeeze, it pumps. One, two, maybe three. So your third dip is here. Look for a, uh, Probably would have gotten in right about here. Goes against me briefly, and then shoo, crashes on down. Well, 1.3 isn't exactly a crash, but you get the idea. Okay, on the 15 minute, so uh, see if we can look for some. See what the alerts would have shown us. Divergence. Since I'm looking for a short, I'm looking for bearish divergence. That one did really well. This one did okay. Take a quick look at this. Okay, this isn't as volatile as I expected. And this one we don't know yet. Well, no, that's what triggered it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and if you want to do, if you want to short this one, negative divergence, that's usually the first one listed. Uh, once per bar close, 
and long-term sentiment. That's how I do that one on, on divergence, but I only had three of those. <laughs> And I'd probably just go with that, knowing the super trend doesn't usually fire off as much. So super trend fired off a little more than I would expect. Um, got this one here, looks a little suspect. Yeah, he'd probably still be bouncing around in that one for a while. It's just really squeezy right here. I might even choose something different other than this. This isn't looking that bad volatile to me after all. Let's look at the RSI. Got this dip here. Nice move down. Caught that move. This move up here. Goes against your first and comes back up. Probably would have gotten in right about here. Uh, might still be in that, actually. And that's the last one. So actually, none of these look that good. I'm not sure I would I would um, set alerts on this. I, I really thought I've been trading this lately. It's had on the 15 minutes, usually having like five, eight percent moves. Well, that's about all I have for altcoin alert. About 40 minutes. That's a good good stopping place. Any questions on altcoin alert, day trading approaches, or any of the new stuff I showed you? Very well. I will stop it here. If you're watching on the recording, thanks for doing that. I hope to see you live next time. Please check out the opportunities in the pinned comment. If you are here for carbon, as you know, kind of change the structure of that. And I'll need you to get back to me in about 13 minutes, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern in the U.S. And you'll need a different link for that. So you should have that either by email or in the Telegram group. So. Uh, I'll see you guys shortly for any for those of you who come back.